Hello and welcome Lynx here and we are playing Ugh, my girlfriend is a demon summoned from the depths of hell What is correct? And uh, let's say there is more than one demon apparently now In our household Technically our parents household uh, The parents are not around, that's why we summoned a demon Our sister is around for and She's the one with the driver's license and our demons need a lift to a supermarket, so let's see how those negotiations go. When you're a demon overlord who has powers beyond human comprehension, you expect fervent comparison from anyone and everyone. Also, the main character is super pathetic. <laughs> yeah, sadly, yeah. Surely one would not think to question my motivations when their existence could be erased at the drop of the hunt. But every once in a while, you encounter a loathsome individual who refuses to bend their knee, opting instead of ch to challenge your almighty providence. And unfortunately for me, my sister one is one of those people. Are you serious, Makoto? Do you think I'd really take those demons anywhere? Yes, apparently yes. Well, what's the big deal? They just want to go to the supermarket and pick up a few things. Is that all? Are you sure they also don't want to order some human souls as takeout? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. One of them just thinks about food all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, food food. No body parts of any sort. Are you sure about that? <sighs> Jeez. If this you think about it... exactly what I was afraid of. If you think about it... Maybe it's also that kind of food. Like, human... Human... As a human food, human being the food, food right? I mean, wh why would that stop Belzebub? I look away from the mess you've made for one second, and we already have more of them to worry about. Yeah. How are mom and dad gonna react when they find out we've let literal demons hang out with us? Yeah. To take it easy, Yumi. BP's only gonna be around for a month anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if our punishment lasted longer than that. I mean, technically you don't deserve a punishment yourself. It's the guy that deserves a lot of punishment, right? Can't you at least take some responsibility for all this? Has to. Of course I will. All I gotta do is keep them in line and help them out with whatever. Mm. And in exchange, they'll teach me all sorts of dark arts. Right. Uh, good luck with that. Come again? That's what their offer was, and I'd be a fool not to accept it. It'll be the beginning of a brave new world, one in which I... Okay, just stop. I already have enough to worry about, and your stupid gimmick isn't helping. Yeah. Ah! She's not budging an inch! Not even my female comic... Cosmic... Comic. I mean, it is kind of like a comic powers. I don't think anything to change her mind. I mean, not like that's ever worked before, but still. Look, I don't get half of what's going on here. Hmm. I'm amazed I managed to get a grip on things the first time. Yeah. But you summoned a demon yesterday, and now that demon's brought other demons with her. What if those other demons will bring more other demons and so on? It's demons here, demons there, demons all over the place. How can I not be worried? Understandable. I mean, they haven't really done anything yet. Yet. I know, but... Whatever. Maybe I'm overthinking things, I don't know. Mm. Can you at least promise they won't make a mess of the place? I would say he can. I, uh, sure. They won't trash the place. Boom. Suddenly an explosion. Somehow, that doesn't ease my worries. Yeah, he's not very trustworthy, isn't he? At this point, Yumi finally picks herself up over the bed and makes her way out of her room. At the very least, you should introduce me to them so I know what I'm getting into. Hmm. But of course, I shall lead the way post-haste. Hmm. I lead her back downstairs in a manner similar to how one would use the Bitfrost Bridge to reach Osgard. 
Once she sees the demons, she recognizes their lack of hostility, but is still on, a little on the edge. We decide to skip the lengthy introductions this time, opting just to use their titles and nicknames. I doubt my sister would have appreciated their subtleties anyway. So just to be clear, you're not going to end up leaving a crater where this house is, right? Of course not. What kind of guests are you taking us for? <sighs> oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. <laughs> I I'm just... I guess I've always associated demons with, like... Fire and brimstone! Arr, big evil! Brimstone is yucky. It's really dirty and it tastes gross. <laughs> but you tried it. <laughs> you tried it, what? Right. It's not like you was wrong in any case. I, I'm really sorry about showing up unannounced. We can find somewhere else to stay if this is too inconvenient for you. Oh, you're fine. Don't worry about it. What do you mean? You could have literally kicked them out right now, by the way. Honestly, I'm surprised anyone would want to hang around with my little bro, much less bring more friends to meet him. By the way, the sister is quite tall, isn't she? You're pretty familiar with him by now, right? Oh, we've seen how he acts. Uh, and he's very, um... How do I put this? Cringe. He's lame. And that? Yeah, super lame -o. The twins have a laugh at my expense. I'm half a step away from calling Satan and having her take them back. But we do want to help him out. He's got a duel coming up after all. A duel? <laughs> uh oh. It is a fated battle between me and my arch nemesis, the everlasting matriarch of the stars, over the right to claim the school as our own. And Jimmy's like, oh, for heaven's sake, just ask her out on a date. Okay, when you say it like that, it makes me assume you're talking about some made-up person. Hmm. D don't you want to at least give me some support here? Bro, you've got enough weird fantasies already. What's one more on the pile? <laughs> Which reminds me, how are we going to take all these guys out in public? Uh, no worries. I really doubt anyone will just see a demon and act like nothing happened. Oh, you don't have to worry about us. We use a special kind of cloaking magic so that no one can see us. Not normally, anyway. Certain people who have summoned demons become influenced by their presence, allowing them to see other demons. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen a whole lot, though, because demon summonings have become a lot rarer nowadays. Interesting. Wait a second. If that's true, then how come I can see you guys just fine? I don't think I had a hand in that summoning ritual, so I shouldn't even be seeing you guys right now. True. Really? How strange. Perhaps you've had the blood of a demon lord flowing through your veins all along, and seeing demons just comes naturally to you. That's fucking stupid, Makoto. That's by far the quickest repeater I've ever seen. She may deny it now, but I have faith that Yubi will awaken to her own dark powers in due time. Hey, hey, are we going yet? We've been taking too long and I'm getting hungry! I want to go get food right now! Alright, alright! I guess I don't have much choice, do I? Hmm. But if anyone's paying for groceries, it'll be you, Makoto. Yeah. What? Why me? It's your demons. Uh, do I need a reason? Good point. Yeah. Yay! Come on, come on, let's go, let's go! Good luck, by the way, because you have a certain very hungry demon there. Without much else to say on the matter, everyone makes their way to the front of the house. Everyone except for BP, that is. You were coming with us? Nah, I think I'd rather just lie around here. Understand. Being those three over was exhausting. Don't worry about me. You go have fun with everyone else. If you say so. Strange that BP doesn't want to come with us, especially not after everything that's happened today. What do you mean, Strange? I'm not surprised. She's a sloth, after all. 
the demon of sloth. Well, she'll be fine so long as she doesn't seek into my room again. Which she will. But there is no time for me to go back and examine the locks. Now I must begin my preparations for what lies ahead. We'll be back soon. Take your time. Without fabulous exchange, I follow everyone else outside. Riding the car always seems... Okay, so the house on the left is ours. Now we know. Riding the car e in the car always seemed so thrilling when I was younger. I'm sure that if you could ask my younger self why I like the feeling so much, he would have been able to give you an answer. I don't know. I didn't have that. I only enjoy driving when I'm driving. Uh, basically, when I'm behind the wheel. Otherwise, not really. Maybe not one that was detailed, but an answer nonetheless. Something about how they were fast or cool, or how the feeling was thrilling, or something like that. I don't know, really. To be honest, I don't even really want to know. Past me made terrible mistakes. Lord knew that I wouldn't want to revisit any of those memories. So when I see our old van lying out on the driveway, I can exactly say that I feel any particular emotion. No nostalgia, no excitement for the trip coming up ahead. Shotgun! Just an acknowledgement of his existence more than anything, the simple plain fact that he once used this whistle travel. What do you mean? Unfortunately, it seemed the current task was not going to be easy. Hey, you snooze, you lose. Big reason why BB ain't with us right now. Hmm. Actually, I was pretty sure that BB chose to stay behind so she could lay around as per usual, but I don't dare to interrupt. Come on, please. Nuh uh. I just called dips. Shotgun? But can't I just. Nope. Calling dibs is a divine right, and there's absolutely nothing you can do to get them now that I have them. Divine? I shouldn't... Shouldn't you don't follow divine rules? Given that you are a demon? But that's not fair! Please... <laughs> I feel like the E should be at the end, given how it is written below. Or, you know, you should add the E's after the sec the first E, not the last one, whatever. Look, can we please just all get in the car already? <laughs> My sister calls from inside the car. It was like a sort of demonic aura. I could sense her frustration even though I couldn't see her right now. <laughs> and although they seemed to be members of the sins, it was as if my sister was a demonic force more powerful than any of them could ever hope to be. I was impressed. I was also afraid. So I decided to case slow steps across the back of the car to its left side, briefly hoping that my sister would not start it and accidentally take me from this mortal plane. The back door is open. Lucifer is standing by it, looking inside. I look into the back seat as well. Bezebub is sitting on the opposite side of the door, still squabbling with her sister. The seat in front of me, the uh, one next to the door, was empty. Pristine, comfortable even. Let's could be said about the spot in the middle. The worst spot, that's true. It was slightly raised compared to the surrounding seats. It was also of a different color than the others. The colors and grape juice instead from long ago. The memories haunt me to this day. The floor below was bumped up, making it so that anyone of the human size could not sit properly. For reasons that no mortal man would ever be allowed to know. Oh, the floor. Okay, that... Makes sense. Kind of. Even for yeah, who knows why. The middle seat. But yeah, sitting in the middle sucks. That's true. A circle felt that not even Dante would have the courage to enter. I couldn't help but loathe the times where I was so damned to the cruel fate. Turning myself into a human pretzel is truly an interesting skill. But doing it for a long time is painful at best. Would I have to face this eternal punishment again? I look away from the back seats towards Lucifer. I'm about to open my mouth to protest before the loud beep explodes from the car. Come on, we don't have all day. I look at Lucifer, hoping that my expression allows her to understand my plight. To understand how much I don't want to have to face this seemingly divine retribution. 
She looks at me when in the middle seat. She looks at me again, her eyes practically begging. I understand her plight. I understand how much she doesn't want to have to face this torture of Abaddon's design. Did she just? She did, didn't she? I saw as I slide into the place. <sighs> I'm glad it's not me, the real me. I always like watching the people pass by. What? Why? Walking their small little roots, doing their small little duties, and living their small little lives. They all come into view, and then leave as quickly as they come. They interest me. In a way, I have no idea what lives they led, and it's unlikely that their lives would ever be significant to my own. They still not fail to pick my attention. As insignificant as they are, as little as they matter to Demon Lord Sebastian Wolfgang IV, it is still interesting to watch them go about their daily lives. It is always fun to guess what they are doing, what they are thinking. Although they are always out of my life the moment they come in. Although it is likely I will forget about them many moments after they leave. I appreciate them all the... What is that noise? I look around the car, trying to see what would have made that infernal drone. I see my sister in the driver's seat as lights go on her face as she navigates the labyrinthy city streets. I see Mammon on the other side, absent-minded looking out the window and seeing the city. I see Bells looking through her own window. And as the window goes down, the facts fall into peace. I found my culprit. What are you doing? Just playing around. She pressed the button on the door, sending the window downwards again. Could you please stop doing that? Aww. Why? It annoys me. But it's fun. How is... How is that fun? Somehow, even if I try to avoid them, memories of my more immature self always seem to come back and haunt me. Is it? Yep, yeah, I haven't been in one of these before, so it's fun checking out all the cool things I can do. Put in before she's like, oh, what's this lever for? And she pulls the handbrake. I see. Joy. Aren't you going to get bored of that? The frustration in her voice is growing by leaps and bounds. It seems as if brother and sister are united at last. Maybe. Not right now, though. Well, you can do it later if you really wanna. I'm trying to drive here. Okay. The window closes for the final time as Bill's up slumps backwards. Content of her shenanigans. It is almost as if she is a child throwing a temper tantrum just because she wasn't able to get her way. And this post understand why she would like the windows. They were new, interesting, unlike anything she had probably seen before. And I suppose thinking about it, I was the same way when I was when I lacked the knowledge and intelligence I have now. I remember playing with the windows just like she had been. I remember doing being told to stop by everyone else in the car. Am I some weirdo that has not been doing that ever? Do people really do that? So much for trying to forget. Ah, I slide lean back, letting my feet drop off the middle seat bump. It was going to be a long pilgrimage. Eventually the car stops, the door open and everyone moves out, eager to get their feet onto solid land again. Ooh, hello! Some Japanese restaurant, some noodle house, some... Ew, natural cafe, ew. Uh, bunk, okay. Ooh, ew, the crappy coffee. Right, bottom right corner of the building. And I have no clue what's at the top right. The supermarket. I, know, I would call it mall, more likely than supermarket. A place of sheer unadulterated anarchy. A place where mortals trample over one another to get the best deals on their bread and water. Uh, I mean, I think that's just USA. A place where the fat cats indulge in capitalistic greed, preying on the needs of the weary in order to surround themselves with hedonistic pleasures. It is a place of human fault, but also a place of demonic prevalence. Regardless, the group involved me seemed to be enjoying it. Whoa. 
So, this is the place we're getting our ingredients from? Yep. This is the supermarket. I, again, I wouldn't call it a supermarket. So cool! Lucifer stands away from the rest of the group, looking at the street around her. Her eyes stop, focusing on a shop on the other side. She seems almost fixated in a way. I can't help but look. The place seems to be an arts and crafts shop of some sort. I don't quite know what's inside, and I don't quite care either. I turn back to the main group, walking towards them as they continue to look to the st at the store. So, wait, there's food in there? Yeah, you take whatever you need from the shelves and then you buy it at the checkout. Wait, so people here spend their money on stuff that doesn't stay? Yeah, we sort of like need to eat after all. Which makes me wonder, why do we have to pay for this stuff? It is necessary for our existence? Right? Interesting. Looks like you guys will do. Hmm? What do you mean? What do you- wait, what do you mean? Mommy is interrupted by her sister who begins to jump up and down the spot like some kind of excited schoolgirl. Can we go in? Can we go in? Can we? Can we? Of course, this is where we'll gather the ingredients we need. Hmm. Huh. What was that that she wanted to say there for? Somehow my dual tone did nothing to deter her excitement. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Um, hey, could you be a little quieter? People are gonna notice you screaming. They will not fall. Actually, they'd notice you, since you're like talking to yourself and stuff. <laughs> can we, uh... So there's nothing I can do about this? Nope. Once you get her like this, there's no going back. <laughs> Fantastic. Can we, uh, go to that art store over there? Again, they didn't trust me, but I suppose that we could at the very least humor her if you have the time. It's just, um, that I sorta of want to, um, like, try doing art again. Try seeing if I can draw this time. I, um, understand if that's not something we can do, but, um... Please? Silence them! Sure, I'll come with you. She turns to me and the other two. You'll be fine doing the shopping, right? Yes. Huh. We'll see about that. My sister just turns blankly at me for a moment. Just make sure you've got those other two under control. Ooh. Alright, Matt, uh, sis. <laughs> <laughs> she says you for looking at Lucifer. Alright, follow me. Alright, uh, thanks. I... Don't mention it. <laughs> they leave. Making sure to look both ways before crossing the street. Once they do so, I turn away and look to the other two. So are you two ready to go in? Yep. Yeah, yeah! I suppose it was time for me to find out how much I was going to enjoy their company. Probably not much, but I'm an optimist at heart. All right, let us enter this abode then. The supermarket! As I said before, a place of many things. Discounts. Greed. Greed, mostly. And human vulnerability, especially. I learned this from an early age by simply observing people. One thing that I seem to have forgotten was that the supermarket was a place of sheer bitter cold? Certain sections, yes. Like this section, definitely. The two of us walk down the aisles of this maze. I pushed the trolley in front of me while music that could only have been written by Belef played on the loudspeakers above. Alright, we have Japanese. So, Japanese store. Sounds about right. Just like Polish. Uh, we're about a third way of the way through the grocery list foodstuffs which could help replenish my mana for the upcoming fight as we went down there yet another ale. I checked the selection or I tried to at least. This whole world seems to be covered in different brands of eggs. Is there any difference between them? It doesn't matter which type of unborn cockatrice I choose to eat. I don't know. It doesn't really matter either. I reach my hand forward to for the cheapest carton and No Yes. 
I follow Sapirius at break, next beat, and bats my hand away. Just I'm about to grab the X. My body jolts. I look around. Is this an attack? Do I need to fight? I'm not so. Don't take those. Why not? As turns out, it's only Bubble. I let my eyes pour into her until she further elaborates on why she just did what she did. Those are caged eggs. Those are bad. What are you talking about? Why? What is he? What's that? Those aren't made to be healthy. Those are made to be cheap. You can't work with those if you want to make good food. Okay, that's bullshit right now. If you know how to cook, you can make it good. I suppose it is only fitting that the spirit of Glatton is itself a big eater. And I suppose human wishes or whatever the word is. What would you propose I use instead? She leans over the railing, pointing at a brand of eggs on the top shelf. They seem to be considerably more expensive than the ones I was planning on taking. These are free range. These are good to eat. It doesn't fucking matter. My sis here gets sorta of particular about food. Just warning you now. We should not take her shopping, by the way. Too little, too late! I lean forward, grabbing the eggs from the top shelf and place them carefully in the doorway. All my hard-earned money goes up. <sighs> I begin to push forward and... Hey! You guys! Oh no. A familiar voice calls and I turn to see Estan. Walking down the hill and waving to us. Sure enough, Isaki walks behind her, looking down the ground as she pushes her own car forward. Great. Just what I needed. Yo, Estan! Happy! <laughs> the two demons move forward, their answering reunion as loud and overbearing as possible. I look to see if there is anything else here. I need, but I spot Misaki out to my eye. Of course, she'd be here with Estan too. Uh, hi. Hello. Her words are short, stuttered. It seems unlike the Countess I knew before. That does mother me the slightest. I turn back to an island. Move. Excuse me? Uh, I need to go past you. Move! I suppose it would be unwise to cause the scene. I do as instructed. Misaki moves forward, heading to the self-checkout at the end of the corridor. Let's go self-checkout. Woohoo! The best invention a supermarket could ever have had. She sends a car through it and begins to place her items there. A peep sounding for each one. I look away, focus on my own task. The next item on the list seems to be butter, which is attainable. I move head along in the A-land. I jolt, I jolt at the sudden noise and look at its source. Misaki is still at the machine, only one or two products away from fishing. An angry expression is scrolled across face, but I'm not exactly sure why. Against my better judgment, I ask. What's wrong? She looks at me, staring for a second. Uh, I don't have enough money. I only have a few notes and... And... She turns off looking away for a moment. Oh boy, could it be that we are going to be giving a loan? Do you need everything there? Y yes, I I need to um um uh, I need to um replenish my mana for a fight. <laughs> she needs to replenish her power. I suppose I understand. Magic. Summoning, to be more specific, was taxing. If the summoner wasn't in peak condition, then the spell would simply burn the flesh in order to meet its cost. Obviously, I didn't want to try and summon without the required mana. And so I adapted that even Misaki was foolish enough to do so. If she wasn't able to replenish her stamina, then she would hardly be ready for our showdown. But was there any satisfaction to be found in that sort of victory? No! It was hollow at best. And for the demon lord Sebastian Wolfgang, the fourth hollow simply wasn't good enough. I walked over to Misaki, bringing my wallet out of his side. <sighs> How uh, much do you need? She paused, glaring at me. There's no need for you to do that. I want to. 
Whoa. She poses again. Looks away for a moment. And finally put the last of her items under the scanner. Boop. Yen. That's like barely anything, isn't it? <sighs> yen. Yen to my currency, please. Thank you. Oh, come on. That's like 30. Okay. And this to Euro. That's like 7 Euro. Come on. How do you not have that amount? How do you not have that amount, girl? That amount seemed pitiful. I reached to my wallet and pulled out 2,000 notes, then gave them to her. You can keep the change. <laughs> wow. The noise that initially comes out her mouth is akin to growl, but she stops and collects herself. Thanks. You're welcome. I shall give the best my cane just for her, just for today, before we meet again. Oh, you guys are so cute together. Estan walks over to the two of us, mommy and Bubble behind her. What is, why is there no voice now? You know, I bet you two would make like a really good friends. Why just friends? No, we wouldn't. Why just friends? Let's go beyond that. No, we wouldn't. Silence for a moment. We look glare at each other before they wrapped into laughter. Mabi and Estan giggle. Bubble collapses breathless. The confusion is palpable. I look at the group, trying to understand the laughter. Why is there no voice again? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? More laughter. Mostly from them. Some. A brief chuckle from me. The humor in the room is surprisingly infectious. Yeah, definitely. You two would get along so well with one another. I would date her. <laughs> Unlikely, but I suppose for now I will... I... We will humor the possibility. Eventually, we each go our separate ways for Misaki and Satan exit the supermarket early to the sadness of the two demons and the indifference of myself. Once we had everything we needed, we... I mean, I paid and left, the voice of the twin demons squabbling behind me. We exit the superstore, the legion of people I saw before having vanished in the late afternoon. Where they go, I don't know. Probably to their unassuming, unexciting suburban life, if I had to guess. I see my sister, the demon Lucy alongside her, at the car, and I push the trolley across the parking lot. Ugh. The wave feels almost Sisyphean, in a way. You done? Yes, we have finished our gathering. Cool. She moves, hoisting up the trunk of the car above her head and letting it hang. Okay, put your stuff in the... What? A scream, piercing louder than the judgment of the gods. A sound that's through the parking lot. I turn unsure of who the noise is coming from. A banshee, a mandrake, a child. A mandrake, but whatever. None of the above, apparently. Where is it? Where is it? Where is what? Person I'm wondering the same thing. My, my necklace, it's gone. Gone? I've lost it. I've dropped it. I... I might not be able to have it again, I... She tries looking off. Does I'm not sure how one could even lose something they had placed on their neck. I mean, because it snapped, it can happen. But so I would know. I've never worn one after all. Ah, uh, fucks that it vanished, sis. How do you think you lost it? I don't... I can't... I... I, I had it! Did I drop it? No, of course not. But then... She seems despondent, in a way. Incapable of response, as she has seen what laid on the deepest circles of hell and lived to the... tell the tale. Of course, she almost certainly had. Do you want to, um, find it? I... please... I... Don't we need to go home, though? Are you stupid? No. Do you not understand the importance of this necklace? Why should I? <sighs> Typical. My sister sighs. <sighs> we 
We can wait a bit, I suppose. I can pack the car while you go look. And I can help? I've got an eye for detail, so, um... If you can help? Me too, if this bothers you that much. Truth be told, I would rather be heading home by now, but given mommy's reaction, I suppose that there wasn't much of a choice. As the summoner, I seem to be her master. And what sort of master would voluntarily let their subjects suffer? A lot of masters probably, but not me. I give the trolley to my sister and note as she takes it and walk to where the others three are. Contented with the arrangement, Yumi moves to unload the cart. The other three look at me expectantly, their eyes boring to me. The words that come out of my mouth are stilted, stuttery. So, uh, what do we do? We look. I know how to look for these things, so, uh... This is boring... Go help my, uh, sister, then. Okay... Yeah, she seems like she would be in the way, kind of. She leaves, for in a different direction. I get the feeling she has no plans to help Yumi. Well, now it's up to us to look through the labyrinthy parking lot. We take our separate paths wordlessly for the sake of efficiency. Now, dude, it's a freaking mall, not a supermarket, all this place. Now that the sun is nearly gone from the sky, there are almost no mortals inhabiting this parking lot. That is convenient. Mm. Let's see. That might be a Nissan. That one is a Fiat Panda. For sure. That's a brand that I absolutely hate, by the way. Skoda. For no particular reason. I don't have a reason to hate it. I just hate it. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> That's all. Uh, a BMW. No, yes, you don't say BMW, goddammit, it's BMW. Or BMW, to be quite fair. BMW. And... I don't know the last one. I don't know, some sort of... No clue. Is it a Volvo? Maybe, whatever. Now that the sun is still gone from the sky, there are almost no mortals inhabiting this parking lot. Technically, the first one might not be in this sun. It might be a... Mercedes as well, to be honest. Whatever. Uh, that is convenient. Preferably even. If I had to bump into someone, if I had to talk to someone who had no idea what the depths of this world were, I wouldn't know what to do. And God knew what would happen if the demon Lord Sebastian will go for was caught of guard. But now was the time for unlikely hypotheticals. I had a necklace I needed to find. I turned the corner and saw a new part of the parking lot. Cars, abandoned trolleys, litter. Eventually, Siglin and Andre conspicuously placed rocked out on the grass. I look forward, slightly curious. Is that what I'm looking for? Is that the thing my covers to covet so dearly? I'm not entirely sure. Still, I suppose there is no harm in looking. I walk to the dumpster, pick the chain thing up and... Mine! Effort spirits with the speed of a lightning bolt and wrenches the thing from my hands just as I'm about to look at it. My body jolts. I look around the station in the thoughts they're familiar. Is this? You found it! You found it! In front of me is Mommy, bent over slightly. She's clutching, caressing the necklace. She's looking at me. Not the two demons coming up from behind her. She's only looking at the object with her hands. Her precious. Her precious position. As expected from the Lord of Greed. I question how much it means, given her extreme reaction. What's so important about that necklace anyway? You're fawning over it! To be honest, I would have preferred to ask why losing it prompted such a reaction from her, but suppose that is the better way of asking? I mean, to, to be honest, the way you asked, terrible. It's... She pauses, shakes her head, continues. It's a necklace that my friend Leviathan gave to me back around a year ago, I guess. Admittedly, it might not be the most valuable. Admittedly, I only took it because Levi made it, but... who? That's sort of the reason, you know? <laughs> like, Levi's a friend. She's not really my bestest friend or anything like that, but like... I still value her. I still care about her. And I care enough Makes to know sense. that she's the type of person who doesn't really make friends easily. Who compares herself to others, and looks down on everything bad they do. 
but I know that she sees herself as worse than others as well. I know she's jealous of other people. I know she wants to be on their level. I know that she expects what she makes to be the best. I know she wants others to care about her things. Once again, he asks this in the wet way. So how would she feel if I suddenly lost the necklace she had made for me? How would she feel if it seemed like what she did hadn't mattered? I also didn't know anything about this Levi person, but I know the least I can do is pretend and understand. And it's like that with everyone. All my friends, all my family. But I try to keep the things they give me. I try to show them that their gifts matter. I don't want to lose them. I don't want them to dislike me. I want to show them that they're important. I want to show them that I care. I guess that's why this necklace is important to me. Hmm. Interesting. I knew that mommy in front of me was the embodiment of greed. But this post in never really saw that possessiveness is a, is a good thing. It is. Sometimes. Hoarding things, keeping them just because you value the people who gave them to you. I guess I will need to hold mommy in a different light. Aw, you found it. I thought I did a good job of hiding it. You bitch. Bubble and Lucy walk onto the scene. What was Bubble doing here? And this looked like she was on the end of the net. So of course then there was Mommy. You hid this? Yeah. You. Got like super flustered and stuff. She giggles. You hear about twins finishing each other's sentences, but I'm pretty sure that isn't what Mommy's thinking. What Mommy's actually thinking, it will probably raise the age rating of this game. I probably said what... It was great! You were like, wah, wah, my precious necklace is gone in! Honestly, Bubble is annoying as fuck. We should kick her out. Back to hell with her. I mean, this sort of scoffing sound. Of course someone like you wouldn't understand! Huh? You just guzzle and consume whatever you can get your hands on and fail to take any of the value out of it! Yeah, so? I want silence before mommy sighs. Whatever. No point in arguing. Let's just go home. One of us needs to act like an adult after all. Oh, right. There's something I need to tell you. She turns to me. Your sis got tired of waiting, so she decided to take stuff home without us. What? What? W what? Yeah, she said that we could just walk home. Apparently, it doesn't take that long. I bet it doesn't. Of all the... Fine, let's just walk. Yeah. But we might be able to make it back before sundown if we begin now. Mm. Right. I guess we start walking now? Yes, we should. And off we went. At long last, we finally reached my dwelling, eager to leave the land of mortals, I head toward my room. But unfortunately, I have more pressing matters to tend to. My elder sister is already waiting for me inside. So, how was your walk? You don't want to know. I don't! Besides, you know, we had Frozens. You don't seriously expect me to let those melt, do you? I've got the point. You stand before three demons and a demon lord. We could just do an ice incantation. Uh, ice incantations? Yay, yeah, hate to break you, but both of us are the fire and brimstone type. Um, I know some ice spells, but I'm not really any good at them, so... Well, I could have done it, of course, but I'm uh, running a little low on mana. Sure. Yeah, you're a real fearsome bunch and all, but have you considered the help of a mortal artifact? Fridge? It's called a freezer. Or freezer? Food's in the freezer? Got it! Be back in a... Oh no, you don't! Jiffy. Why is there no voice here? Who do you think you are trying to eat before everyone else? We're starving too! So, 
You eat before everyone else all the time. Did you eat for a day? Oh, shut up. Beepy is already working on dinner for everyone anyways. What? What's the freaking? I extend a hand to Yumi's shoulder. Yumi, I'm so proud of you. What do you mean? Excuse me? For years, you've rejected your calling. Though you carry the blood of a sorcerer in your veins just as much, no, perhaps even more than I, your emotional state has always sealed your true potential. What is this guy talking about now? But now you've awoken, and your latent talent has allowed you to surpass even my years of study. What the hell are you on about this time? Isn't it obvious? Beepy would never do something as useful as making dinner, let alone for other people. Even though I couldn't, you must have become cognizant of your powers and started to control her. <sighs> I don't think that's that. Nah, I was just reheating the leftover pizza. There's even enough for everyone. <laughs> She comes out with several plates of reheated pizza. They look crisp and good as new. No, they don't. I guess it depends where that was reheated, but if you say reheated, I assume it was microwave. It does not look crisp and it not, does not look good as new for sure. Finally! Nothing that comes out of microwave looks like that. steal it from me, then you have to! How's that fair? <sighs> Mommy, why do you have no voice? It's because you started it you saw from me like 20 minutes ago! They run off, still squabbling over their share. Better ignore them for now, I guess. I guess I'll just consider it part of my training. Or something like that. Lucy quietly takes her share with a curt note before running off. Beepy moves closer to offer me a slice, but I find myself deep in thought. I see. I suppose the use of a microwave is within I knew it. these capabilities. And so it seems my sister's potential continues to slumber. Psh. The microwave. Yeah. Everyone knows that if you really want to <gasps> She used the oven! Let's go, Beepy! For the win! That's so true! Nobody normal uses microwave. Come on. Then. There is only one explanation. I put my arm on Yumi's shoulder again. Yumi, I take it back. The power stored within your veins has been unleashed <laughs> after all. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yes, he is. Also, power being in the veins is just a common misconception. It's actually stored in the arteries. Which makes, make, make, makes sense. Make sense. Is the arteries getting, let's say, cut that are more dangerous than veins being cut technically? But whatever. Jeez, you think that just because I'm a demon personifying sloth, I gotta do everything the easy way? I literally have no clue if you can hear her now. Um. Yes. <laughs> they are! And killer whales kill things? They do! Yes! And red pandas are red? Technically, yes. Yeah! Well, actually, it's more of an orange, but in comparison to a normal panda, yes! No, I wouldn't call it orange. No, whatever. But you know what? An electric eel isn't an eel. A killer whale isn't a whale. And a red panda isn't a panda. True. Your expectations could be wrong where you least expect it. What does that have to do with you putting so much effort into reheating pizza? Nothing. Just thought you might be able to relax with some <laughs> fun animal trivia. Relax! A battle deciding the fates of the two most powerful demon lords in the Tri-State area will be upon us in less than two days, and you expect me to relax? Yes. <laughs> the hell is a Tri-State area? What I need to do is prepare myself for Armageddon. Oh, okay. The only 
Armageddon here is what you did to the garage. <laughs> what? What's on the phone that happened? Really? About time you dealt with that, don't you think? Indeed. No, the task has already been consumed by these meaningless errands. The rest of this night must be devoted to my training. I don't sleep away, but you miss arm latched onto me like serpents. Uh, mouth? You're not getting out of it this time. For fuck's sake, just finish it already! Yeah. It seems that my freedom has been compromised. For it's unbecoming for one of my station to yield, I could overcome my sister powers, even if I lay dormant. Also, she's squeezing my arm really hard. I want her to stop! Fine. If you truly find it to be such a burden, I will purify the arcane residue brought about by my ritual. But in exchange. No exchange. Just do it. Tch, not even the powers of such a will be effective here. If that duel ends in my defeat, my blood will be on your hands. I'm shockingly okay with that. <laughs> Understandable. Damn it all. If fortune is on my side, then perhaps Elizabeth is being put through these same sorts of trials. She did the same ritual after all. Then perhaps we may yet be on the even footing. I grab my instruments of purification. These guys as mere soap and a towel from the closet and pour holy water from the sink onto a sacred vessel. With prudence, I may be able to salvage some experience from this. But when I finally make it to the battlefield... It's already been cleaned? Th this can't be! Have I mastered time magic without realizing it? Oh, yeah. I did clean that, didn't I? <laughs> you what?! I see. You're not BB! You are not but a foul doppelganger! <sighs> I must admit, on a physical level, your disguise is flawless. But you're a poor actor, fiend! You should have killed me when you had the chance! I don't know where you've put the real BP, and I don't know if I actually care, but your wretched life is forfeit! The third page of your math notebook has a doodle of a wolf. <laughs> One half is made of fire, and I think the other half might be ice or something. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to tell, because you're not that good of an artist. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Don't know. I got bored when I was in your backpack. So I looked through some of your stuff. Thought bringing it up might prove my identity or something. <laughs> but that was the only possible explanation. And that isn't a doodle. It is a complex ritual to assist in the conjuring of a beast by developing an image from which it can manifest. Sure. Hmm. Well, now we can just relax for the rest of the night. Yay? Hmm. This is fantastic! Now I can spend this time preparing for my duel. Thanks to your support, Elizabeth's demise will surely be at hand. Oh. Okay. I mean... I just thought... I just thought... You know, since I made your pizza Aww. in the oven and everything, and clean the garage for you. You might spare a little bit of time to hang out with me. She's so nice! Especially because without my help, you would have been stuck scrubbing the floor all night. But I guess your responsibilities are just too important. Yes, yes. Play him like that. To think all of that hard work just put to waste. Uh, what's going on? Some horrible pit in my stomach. Poison! With a walk so beautiful that no board could sink of it without breaking tears, she ever slowly leaves the garage. Hi! Hey. Even the city will I cannot abide by the trusty of this bank, you not! BP! Wait! What? You want me to get Yumi to drive you somewhere? A nice place that's too far away for that annoying BB to distract you from your super important training? No, that's not it. We should make each other's acquaintance. Just for a bit. Hmm? That means hang out? 
and normal people talk, <laughs> right? Sweet. I'll see what's on TV. I haven't been deceived, have I? Just mean to think that Pippi abducts me to the living room. She sits me on the couch and snuggles up next to me before covering the two of us under an outright absurd number of blankets. Sounds Coming good. Coming soon on DVD. With the stage set that she turns to the TV and starts on the surfing. Whoa. I wanted to see this movie for weeks now. And what do you know? It's just starting. What a crazy coincidence. Hmm. Don't tell me. Was this all part of some diabolical plot? And if so, how long has it been in motion? Regardless, I'm her prisoner. Until his, this movie ends, these blankets may as well be my, made of concrete. No worries. Magic resistance concrete. Need to say, I'm not going anywhere. Ah, that was loud. The movie itself seems to be about a society that consists entirely of giant robots. The giant robots can't talk, so all they do is fight. Oh, sounds like humans in general. Oh, I know this game. However, a group of teenage a giant robots runs in alien technology that gives each of them the power to release a human from their cockpit and control it remotely. I think this is from the first game from this death we played, by the way. I don't remember the title, I'm sorry. It's been a long time. With this power, they get the ability to talk through their disputes. A group of evil robots ends up having the same power, but the teenagers use their superior communication skills to persuade the villains into a different course of action. Before I know it, the film reaches its end and the credits roll. Yowza! I thought that'd be pretentious, but it really was as good as they said. Hmm. What do you think, Makoto? Have a good time? For the last time, call me! Come on. It's no big deal. <laughs> relax. Relax. First, you steal two hours of my time and now my dignity. <laughs> he was more fierce than I could ever known, and yet... It was nice. I prefer the content of my eldritch texts, but as a brief intermission, I suppose it was an acceptable use of my time. It was a way better time than you would have had practicing for that dumb magic show you have in two days, right? <laughs> magic show. Hmm. What is two hours of enjoyment when put up against the potential for infinite power? Eh, uh, I guess that's the best I could have gotten out of a sourpuss like you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to rejuvenate my energy in preparation for my next journey to the mortal realm. Sure, sure. Now then, I know the extent of BP's villainous machinations, for she said that the previous night was the last where she would occupy my bed, I'm far too intelligent to fall for such a blood and ruse. With my nightly preparations complete, I check the living room, BP's still there, none the wiser excellent. But this fight isn't over, cleverly I check all around my room just in case she's played some sort of freak under the bed, seeing all the rowers in the closet and even my backpack, no sign of her. And now we act. I shut my door, turn the off lock, Beep. slide over the deadbolt, Tick. and of course a padlock wouldn't hurt. <laughs> now of course a fool would stop there, but I'm properly my lord, I know what I'm up against. It's time for the last nail in the coffin. I draw a magic ceiling circle on the piece of paper and affix it to the door with special ritual tape. Yes, this should do. Satisfy myself, I turn the lights off and get into the bed. And so, the sweet embrace of slumber is to grab hold of me once again. Uh. <laughs> what? Beepy? How? Oh, hey, look. <laughs> Come here often. How did you get in here? Who cares? I guess if you really wanted, you could just kick me out. But then, you'd have to get out of this nice, soft bed <laughs> and go through all the trouble of undoing those locks. I've never at any point in my life felt such a poignant sense of defeat. <sighs> Whatever. Good night, Makoto. Good night, BP. You lucky bastard. You lucky bastard. Right, 
let's end this here for today. It's my time to take my demon in a positive way on a walk. And by that I mean my dog, of course. That little demon. Oh, you, you know what? I feel like slowly this becomes better, which is great. Not that it was bad, but it, it becomes better slowly. Definitely with progress of the story, it becomes better, which is a great thing. That's about all I'm going to say for now. I guess regarding the title and so on, I guess we can assume the supposed my girlfriend will be BP. Even for, I feel like, uh, what's her name, Misaki? She would do as a fine, as a fine girlfriend as well. But yeah, for today, that's it. Um, like, subscribe and so on. And have a wonderful day, obviously. Bye-bye.